So it's not news that there's been a lot of violence on the Vegas Strip. But what is news is this one Las Vegas hotel and casino that's actually fighting back against it. Stay tuned to find out who it is and what they're doing. It's the Ace of Vegas, the Ace of Vegas. Hey there, Spinners and Sharks, Ace of Vegas here, and I hope you're doing well. So for today's video, I wanted to go ahead and discuss a new policy that the Wynn Encore Hotel and Casino Las Vegas has put into effect to prevent more Vegas violence on the Las Vegas Strip. So I was really surprised this morning when I got this in my inbox. Over the weekend, photos surfaced of bag checks being performed at the Wynn. A source at the property confirming to Fox 5 that these bag checks at the entrances have resulted in the confiscation of several guns and drugs. Pretty wild news report, right? This is something I was actually really surprised about. Metal detectors and security checks on the way into a Las Vegas hotel and casino in 2020. Let's break this down because this is a fascinating thing. So here are the basics behind it. What's basically happening is on the weekends, so that's Friday through Sunday, Wynn has additional security staff, metal detecting wands, and checkpoints at all of their entrances to the property. And what they're doing is they're putting people in little security lines as they enter. They get a good wanding down and have to empty their pockets before they can proceed in. I understand they're also checking bags. Now, I'm not entirely clear on if it's just handbags and laptop bags or if they're also including luggage. It seems to me in my reports that I've gotten from my sources, uh, which are people that have actually been there in the last weekend, specifically not just the news, but also people that have been there. Uh, shout out to the Wind Tips and Tricks group. Uh, moderated by my good buddy Robert. Go ahead and uh, check them out in the description box below. Anyway, from what they've told me, people that have actually been there, is that they line up, they get the check done, they get a little wand, and they come on through. Luggage is not being checked, from what I understand, on the way in if you give it to bellhops. Now, do they check it behind the scenes? I couldn't tell you. I haven't been there. I'm not going in for, uh, for another week, and that's going to be midweek anyway, so it doesn't really matter. That's what we know so far until I actually go to the win. I can't confirm or deny any of this. Just, uh, just report on what I've seen on the news. That's it. So that being said, it kind of brings up some interesting feelings here. Um, number one, it's a security kind of thing, but it's also a privacy thing. So there's always the standard fight of security versus privacy. But I guess the biggest thing is how people feel about guns, really, at this point, especially since the biggest thing that they've confiscated, in addition to street drugs, which they haven't specified if it was more alcohol or if it was party drugs, quote-unquote, like, um, you know, it starts with a C, or if it's the more legal herbal type of drug, specifically, or maybe it might be something that's prescription that comes from the doctor that may or may not have actually prescribed it specifically to you because that does happen too. Those are facts. Everyone here is 21 and up. We know what sort of things happen, what sort of things people do. Fact of the matter. And if you're not 21 and up and you don't know what these things are, I really need you to click off this video right now because COPA is the thing. But back to the point, sir, yes, I think the biggest argument and concerns seem to be over the guns and the ability to go to Vegas with your gun or be inspected, that sort of thing. And the two arguments seem to break down like this. There's either Exhibit A. And with that power, we've made a world where no eight-year-old boy will ever lose his parents because of some punk with a gun. Or there's Exhibit B. Can you even see what you're shooting at? Nope, just keeping them honest. All right, those are kind of extreme examples, but you guys get the point. But then that does beg the question too. Is it better to have more security or is it better to have more personal responsibility and personal freedoms there? Because on the one hand, I definitely get it. You're going to Vegas on vacation, on holiday, however you guys say it in your country, town, state, whatever. That's what you're doing. You're trying to have some fun. Maybe you're going for work. You're looking to relax and you're looking to have a stress-free time. And that makes perfect sense to me. On the other hand, though, with all the reports of violence and, you know, frankly, the fact that the police can't be everywhere at the same time, I can understand the train of thought where people say, you know what, it's open carry, I've got a Second Amendment right over here, and I can handle myself, this might be a good way for me to handle myself, too. I can kind of get that, um, you know, no, no one wants to be made a victim, 
factor than that. No one wants to be made a victim, and you want to have some authority, some power over how you handle things. There's that too. Personally, if it was up to me, I'd say we just go ahead and take it outside. You do a formal match. First one, the three downs or three points wins, and then you either you know have a beer with each other or you got your separate ways, and that's that. So those thoughts out of the way and that thought process out of the way, I kind of do wonder why they made this push so suddenly, especially since we know that Vegas is no stranger to violence, but they've also been talking about this for a while. Let me tell you what I mean. As you guys know, a recent anniversary came up. It was recently October 1st. Let that sink in. It was recently October 1st. This is a very similar conversation that we had actually probably about this time three years ago. Do we need metal detectors? Do we need more security? Do we need to check luggage and that sort of thing there? Because a certain individual, his name starts with a Steven and ends with an attic. There might be a P at the start of that end of the last name over there. He committed a heinous crime. He murdered a lot of people in cold blood, and he was a sick son of a bitch for it. I'm not going to mince any words on that. There's a special place in hell for him, and I'm really glad that he's burning him there. Say what you will, but when you do something like that, you get what you deserve. I'm, you know, I, I, I think uh, shooting himself, before, let's call it what it was, he shot himself. So I think shooting himself before the authorities got there was too good for him. But that's just me. I really just didn't like what he did. It was wrong. That's that. Go ahead and at me. I'm not gonna say don't at me, bro. Go ahead and at me, bro. Anyway, all those emotions aside there, I'm gonna go ahead and get back to, let me get composed again. But those facts aside, basically, when that happened, this was actually a very similar conversation. People asked if they should have metal detectors to prevent this sort of thing again. And at the time, it sounded a little weird because if you guys have seen those SP tapes, um, that's what we're going to call him, SP. If you saw the tapes from SP, he was a high roller and he was treated very much the way most people are treated. The fact of the matter is, a lot of people, they do bring a lot of luggage. Some people are vendors there for uh, conventions. Some people are salesmen there for big conventions or whatever. Other people just kind of pack heavy. It's not unusual for... Uh, for women or uh, gentlemen to show up with seven or eight bags that are like rolling suitcases and have them bring them up and then the bellboy just gets uh, tipped 20 bucks and he's good. And they can have whatever. I've seen everything from adult novelties to action figures to comics and that sort of thing there because it's just one of those places. Vegas is one of those places. But to see it actually implemented kind of makes me wonder if it's going to catch on because it didn't catch on back then and I'm wondering if it's because it was such an odd incident and it hasn't repeated or maybe it's only caught on now because so many incidents that have been recorded and this is the only thing going on and you know, this is the only thing people are seeing because there are no shows to report on, there are no clubs open, half the pools aren't open, half the hotels aren't open, or at least not at maximum capacity. So maybe all this extra negative press is what's really generating the buzz to kind of force hotel casino companies to go this direction. Now, do we think this is going to help? That's another question. I think it might slightly increase security if you're checking in, but just at those properties. So it has to be kind of an all or nothing thing, in my opinion, to get it to really work, to get people, at least in the hotels, to, you know, kind of step off if they're, you know, if they're carrying that sort of thing. I think it's definitely going to tick a lot of people off. People aren't going to want more lines, and there's still a lot of lines going on. And people aren't going to want their privacy invaded, especially if they're bringing, if they're bringing bags of interesting things that they might not necessarily want people going through. Um, not necessarily dangerous, but possibly private things. I think that could be a, uh, I think that could be a thing. That could be a, a deterrent, and they're going to see some kind of changes there in attendance. Now, attendance isn't exactly great right now. Weekends are looking great. Midweek's not looking great right now. You're probably looking at roughly 40% of room occupancy, at least as of July. I think it was about 42.6% or something along those lines. So this is a very fragile time for the Vegas hotel industry. I don't think this is going to damage them severely, but they've lost some money uh, with being closed and they're getting some bad press right now. So they're trying to do everything they can, especially when right now, to make people feel safe. Uh, not just from the virus, but from other guests 
I say guests, but other visitors, I should say. We'll say other visitors right now. It's going to be a challenge. So I guess the real question is, does Vegas prioritize safety now more than privacy? Or is privacy a better thing to prioritize than safety? I don't know. What do you guys think? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. Well, spinners and sharks, that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed today's discussion and found it informative, I'd appreciate a like and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Next time we meet, I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit more My Vegas content before we actually get back to the city of neon itself. But until next time, this is Ace of Vegas signing out, and I'm wishing you all strong hands and, of course, happy spinning, you guys. Viva Ace of Vegas. Viva Ace of Vegas. Viva Ace of Vegas. Viva Ace of Vegas. Viva